So for me, it's two in the morning, you're tired, you hear a loud bang that just something about it is off. And look outside my window and I start seeing a fire, which in my first thought is there's danger right there. It's not close enough to the barracks, but that's a vehicle on fire, it could explode. And I'm already thinking, okay, what are uh, possible scenarios that might be happening with this? Maybe the fire's about to go out, or maybe it's something a lot bigger than I realized. And so to me, it was just, there's a problem, there's a danger. Is it gonna affect anyone? It might because that vehicle could explode. And so there's that part. The second one is I was staring at the fire for maybe like five seconds of just staring at it. Cause I was trying to think, you know, what happens now? Okay, I realize there's a threat. I realize that the barracks is fine, but that's still a threat. Cause like I said, the vehicle could explode. And it's actually from the NCO creed that I, one of the phrases that I, I think is just core to who someone should be. I will exercise initiative in the absence of orders. No one ordered me to do anything. I had to actually think about, no, what needs to get, I need to take the initiative. And so that's when I ran outside and I called 911 and the, there was a, a moment as I'm calling them that I'm on the one hand hoping I don't get in trouble because if it turns out it's nothing that the fire was just some little thing, I didn't want to get yelled at for spreading a false alarm or for overreacting. But the other hand, a part of me is like, I don't want to underreact and actually it got worse because I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm sure it's nothing. As I actually remember the historical event was uh, for Pearl Harbor. The uh, uh, radar people had gotten signals of an incoming wave and they thought, oh, it must be B-29s or maybe the equipment's not working. And so because they downplayed it, something terrible happened. So here's the same thing. Here I was trying to maybe downplay it or maybe it's nothing, but like, no, I should take the initiative. If I get yelled at or if I get made fun of for taking the initiative, and overreacting. I'd rather be teased for overreacting than feel ashamed for not having done enough. And so running down the stairs, um, then running out the door, again, it just comes, the whole process is, I see a threat, I heard there's someone who's in danger in the vehicle, and then at that point, everything just came down to get the soldier out, and that's how we executed that. My last year of high school, I wanted to prove to myself that I, I'm not an idiot. I can commit to something and actually do well. So I went from an A, B, mostly C student to getting straight A's my entire uh, senior year, just to prove to myself that I know what I can do. That if I could actually focus on and commit to something, I could actually succeed. And I did, and I have straight A's on my senior year of high school. After that, my parents encouraged me to go to college. So I went to a junior college at first, so I got an associate's behavioral psychology, I thought about being a behavioral psychologist, but just something about it, it felt different. I didn't mind helping people, I just, I had an issue where my financial security depended on how well I helped them, and I would rather just help someone to help them, not because I'm getting paid, but that's just my personal take on that. So I was like, all right, let me try a different career. So then I went to uh, a regular college, and I got a bachelor's in history. And again, the same thing is where, well, I like history, but I don't think it's the point where I'd make a career out of it. So then uh, I went, my third college degree was uh, studies in uh, paralegal. And so same thing, I was thinking, well, maybe I'll be a paralegal, and that way I'll see if I want to be a lawyer. And about that time, just, I was making all these choices, but just something felt off, like it might be fun in the moment, but I felt that I'm sure over time I just, something about the career, just it wouldn't appeal to me anymore. It would get boring or it'd get dull. And oddly, the way I um, got contact about the Army is I'd actually downloaded the game America's Army and was playing it and somehow uh, I uh, contacted a recruiter about it. They contacted me, it's been a while, but uh, it's just one of those things where I'd always thought about the Army. I mean, I, I love the movies, I love reading books about it, even history books, video games, definitely. And just there was this point of where someone confronted me, hey, like, would you ever actually think of it as a career? And that's when I actually thought to myself, back to when I was in high school, hey, if I, I know that if I commit to something, I can succeed. And at the time, one of the biggest changes from 
when I was a civilian to when I was a soldier is even though I was a civilian, I had good intentions and I wanted to succeed, I didn't have the confidence. And one of the greatest things the Army gave me is the amount of confidence I have now and the assurance that I know what my strengths and weaknesses are and I know much more accurately what I can and cannot accomplish. And so that is definitely one of the biggest transitions I've seen from civilian to soldier is it doesn't matter what it is, I'm always confident when I do it. So for my job, I am a 25 Sierra, which is a satellite operator maintainer. And the reason I picked it was as I was at the recruiter's office, originally I thought of infantry because at the time I had never done anything in college that was actually technical. I, again, didn't have the confidence, whereas now I actually, in my spare time, I, I modify video game consoles as a hobby. And that was who I am now. And if you told me this when I was a civilian, I wouldn't believe that's who I'd actually become. I just never thought I was that uh, skilled or able to be skilled in technical matters. But the Army definitely changed my, my view on that. But um, I wanted to be infantry because I thought that's, that's the best I could do. But he, the recruiter, heard my background, saw that I knew how to learn, and I could actually uh, do well in a very uh, study-heavy environment. And so he was saying, like, I know your heart's set on infantry, but try this first, because you seem like a very, uh, you're a very college type of guy, and this is one of those jobs where you're going to have to use those critical thinking skills. Give 25 Sierra a shot. See if you like it. If you don't, you can always just reclass infantry if it just happens not to be for you. So I, I appreciate that the recruiter didn't just try to sign me up right away. He was actually trying to see where I fit in best. And looking at it now, I definitely agree that I, I do much better in the signal communications field. And it's definitely actually, it's what I say would click with me personality and uh, interest-wise because the field's always changing. It's always very advanced. And even though for my job, we set up our equipment all the time. There is to me actually this very intense, almost game aspect of having to troubleshoot my equipment. Why isn't it working? Is it because maybe one of the cables has gone bad? Maybe a configuration file has been uh, miscreated? So to me, I think that's the one thing that made me realize that being a 25 Sierra is what I want because it's never a dull moment. There's always something new to learn, some new equipment, some new way to troubleshoot it. And so that's why for me, I feel much more satisfaction in my life now that I'm in the Army. I would say it's a mixture of two things. One is the kind of people who would serve well in the Army would be people who can be honest, not in just telling the truth, but just with themselves. If you're at a moment where you realize you're struggling, you need to be able to tell other people and trust them, hey, look, I'm having a problem here because others, they will train you, they will teach you, but they need to know it. So if you always keep it to yourself, you're trying to hide that you're not doing a good job or that you're not as skilled as you come off as, you have to be able to put your pride aside and just trust that your battle buddies are going to actually, they're not going to, anyway, they might make a joke at your expense, but they will ultimately help you and improve you. So you would need the level of honesty to be able to tell yourself, hey, look, I know this sucks right now, I'm in basic, and we're doing this long ruck march, but you gotta push yourself. When I was in selection for PSYOP, we did this one ruck march where, I don't know how long it was or where we were going or the distance, but it's the only time in my career I've actually started to fall asleep on a ruck march, and I'm about to face plant every time, but I had to wake up and tell myself, no, you gotta keep going, gotta keep going. So, like I said, it's, it's honesty in everything that you do that, yeah, it sucks, I wish I could go to sleep, but I know I have, I have what it takes to keep pushing myself to succeed. To me, leadership is leading by example. It's not just telling people to do something, it's to show them that this is something that I am going to do as well. If there's 20 shovels and we gotta dig a hole and there's 20 of us, there's no reason for me to not to pick up a shovel and to help out. So lead by example. Another big thing is that Every time there's a victory, you always, always praise your soldiers. Every time there's a failure, you always take responsibility for it. If I failed, it's because I didn't train my soldiers. Or 
I have not prepared them or something in a way. If they fail, they never failed, it's because I failed them. And after a while, that's the big thing of where, from your leadership, it's earning your soldiers' trust, be it by looking after their welfare, by training them up so that way they know how to do their job, and by both a mixture of leading by example, but also taking the initiative and taking care of your soldiers, that is to me what true leadership is. I'd say the leadership advice I would give them is at the end of the day you have to use situational judgment in the sense of where say you have a soldier who's going through a really tough time and you notice that maybe their US Army flag is slightly crooked. You should use good judgment of you don't need to rip their head off. You know they're going through a lot of stuff. You have to still correct them. That doesn't mean you just let them do whatever they want. You correct them but for me and my soldiers I never have to raise my voice, I just have to speak in a firm voice, I have to still be calm when I speak, but at the same time, always through my actions, I can tell that I'm doing it because I care about them. I don't want them to go out with a messed up uniform and get chewed out by someone else. I'm going to stop right there and there, but I don't need to yell at them, I don't need to make them feel like I'm personally attacking them, because that's one of the issues that uh, I noticed when I was a junior, enlist or a junior soldier, is that there would be people who would criticize each other where they get criticized, and afterwards when the NCO left, they would feel that they were, uh, it was a personal attack, they'd feel embarrassed and humiliated, even though I know that the NCO was just correcting some behavior, but the way that they came off about it made the soldier feel like they were being disrespected. And it's one of those clashes you can always have of the old army versus the new army, and you're just trying to find what's best for the army. And so, to me, that advice would be, definitely the soldier should feel that you care about them, and through that, They'll trust you, because when I first was in NCO, when I was at Bragg, I thought I had to start getting angry with people, I thought I had to start yelling and all this stuff, but then I realized that uh, I started just, I was very respectful, very polite with my soldiers, and at the same time, I just got straight to the point, I didn't waste their time, I didn't mess with them, and as long as I was respectful, and I actually, when events happened, I looked out for them, made sure that they were taken care of, they actually listened to me, and that was that, that big leap of just because you're being respectful to them and you're taking care of them does not mean that's weakness. They will ultimately trust you and look after you if you look after them. And it's just this never-ending cycle of if you look out for them, they'll look out for you, and then everyone looks out for the unit and the mission gets completed. Awesome. I'd say the biggest thing from how it was, because when I actually had just graduated high school, I didn't know what major to go with, and I felt lost for the longest time. Even after high school, feeling lost, and then after those three degrees I went through, after that, I wasn't feeling lost. I just felt unfulfilled, and the Army gave me everything. I have a sense of direction, a sense of purpose. And so I've had soldiers who just want to do one contract, and I still thank them for what they do in their service, because they're still serving their country. I don't look down on some just because I want to do career and go 20, 30 years. That's just me, and that's just there's a special breed that is able to do that. But for someone who just joins for a one contract, I feel that that will ultimately make them a better person because, on the one hand, you will definitely have that confidence that I didn't have when I was a civilian because you're tested in ways in the army that you will not normally get in the civilian world. So you'll have a sense of confidence, but you also have a sense of purpose, and you'll realize how important and valuable your time is. I've, same thing for the Army, I mean, you have uh, guard duty, so your weekend isn't guaranteed. It's still important, but when you start to realize that your time isn't gonna be guaranteed, that weekend isn't always gonna be there. You might have to pull duty, you might be on an exercise. It makes you value your time more, and I've seen people who've come from AIT to the units that I were at during my career so far, and then some of them got out at those units and to see the change from brand new to the army to about to leave they don't realize it sometimes but they're much more confident when I first met them and they already have a purpose they all oh, I got jobs lined up oh I'm gonna do this I'm gonna start this career and so it's it's not scary like people think it's not like when you go to basic it's not starship troopers where they're gonna break your arm if you don't put your hand on the wall or nothing like that and that was what I thought at first because I just I'd never known what the regular army was like 
but I mean, there's still going to be standards and disciplines. You're still doing stuff that's very serious. You're handling grenades, using weapons, even my combo equipment. Uh, you have to have security clearance to handle it, so you can't just uh, be reckless with it. So I think part of it is because the Army environment, this is the real life stuff. This is real, and it's serious stuff.